everyone. I'm so excited to see you on our uh, PD session for teachers only. I can't wait to start our session because it's again about interact interactive uh, presentation tool. Prezi. And uh, actually, I can't get how it works uh, when I started investigating this uh, EDU platform. But um, I really hope that Dr. Michael Harvey, uh, our great guest, and uh, he is a science educator based in Malaysia, and my expert, Flipgrid Global Ambassador, Wakelet Ambassador, Apple Teacher, and Level 2 Google Educator. And I think uh, he will um, introduce himself much better. He will share with us how to start working on Prezi. Uh, so I can't wait to know from which part of the world you are tuning from. Share in the comments area. Uh, wow, I can see that here uh, is Ludmila and uh, also Valeri. Thanks for joining us. Um, share how are you feeling today. I know that's a day pretty tough ones. And um, are you having holidays right now? Share with us. How is the situation? I hope that you and your family are us to safe and uh, thank you for joining us again. I know that everyone is so busy these days. We are all tired of the screen of the computers and the whole um, device stuff that we've got around us. But um, let's kick it off. I would love to invite Dr. Michael Harvey to our stream today. And he's going to tell you uh, and to uh, share with his best tips how to start working on Prezi. Hello, Dr. Michael Harvey. How are you? <laughs> Hello, I'm, I'm well. Uh, I'm also um, on holiday here in Malaysia. Um, awesome. Hello to Siberia there. Um, yes, yeah, so today I'm going to essentially focus on, on the pedagogy um, behind um, Prezi rather than kind of the nuts and bolts. Uh, one of the, the big updates in the recent uh, weeks with Prezi is the movement to uh, Prezi video, which is another way that we can um, use uh, the flip learning model in the classroom create uh, Prezi videos for our learners to um, utilize. So I'm quite excited about um, discussing that. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> okay. okay. Right, so I'm going to now share my screen. I'm going to be using a Prezi. So uh, here we go. Awesome. Uh, share screen. Okay, so share the entire screen. Yeah, hello from Tunisia. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Here we go. This is the Prezi. Okay. So, yeah. So, basically, the presentation today, uh, we're looking at how to create and curate uh, Prezi content for both uh, professional learning as educators and also for our students uh, with both Prezi Next, which is the, the standard um, Prezi, similar to PowerPoint in terms of presenting, uh, and also the addition of Prezi Video in recent times. Okay. There we go. Right. So, in terms of... Uh, teaching notes. So the advantage of Prezi is it combines the narrative power of Prezi Next uh, with the quick and easy recording capability of Prezi Video, which has just come in in recent weeks. Like a couple of weeks ago, I had a conversation um, with Prezi Video about how they want to develop um, Prezi Video itself. Um, so again, this is, this is great for flipped classrooms because uh, some of us are still in remote classroom scenarios. Um, myself in Malaysia, the same thing. I've got half my students online and half my students in the classroom. So this is a great way that I can interact with them both uh, simultaneously using Prezi Next. Um, so basically in this presentation, um, I'm going to help hopefully for those who are new to Prezi, uh, which is a Hungarian application, which has been around for about six years, um, to get started with developing your Prezi content. Um, walk through the new features of Prezi Video and the best practices for recording video. Uh, and that can be applied not only to Prezi, but making flip lessons for your students uh, in general. And also, uh, finally, a guide to developing um, your content in Prezi. Uh, so any questions, um, my Twitter uh, handle is at Dr. Underscore Harms, which you see there. <clears throat> okay, so moving along to... Um, the art of planning. So in terms of, of pedagogy, um, in order to design our lessons, and that includes creating presentations with Prezi and making videos, um, you've probably got lots of content that you want to uh, teach your students, um, but you have to make the order coherent um, and also allow it to be challenging enough for your students, so kind of differentiating in that sense. 
Um, so in terms of giving you some tips about developing your Prezi content, um, the, ex the, the way I do it is I plan backwards, um, I take stock of content, I create an outline, and I cross-reference cross research. So what does that mean? Okay, so in terms of backward design, okay, so this comes from two American educators, Wiggins and McTee, in 2011, um, and it makes sure that uh, what you're doing in your Prezi or any presentation uh, matches the goals in your learning for that particular lesson. Okay, so yes, you've got to use it as an overarching um, approach <clears throat> when you're using Prezi Video and Prezi Next to create these Prezi presentations. Okay, so there's basically three steps to it. Um, the first thing you have to do before you even begin developing your presentation is identify the desired result or outcomes uh, of your presentation. So what do you want your learner to know, understand, and be able to interact with when they're doing um, or using the, the Prezi, okay, or when you're using the Prezi for presenting, presenting to them. Uh, what is the learning goals and why are those learning goals important? Um, how does the outcome relate to the professional or student standards that you're using? That's step one. Uh, step two, determine what your learners need to produce as evidence of learning. So how will you know that your students have actually got the information that you wanted to present to them in your Prezi? Uh, and what are the opportunities and constraints for learners to illustrate their knowledge? Okay, so different ways that learners can actually show their understanding. Okay, so I guess this is also kind of app smashing in a sense. So not only are you using Prezi's, you can incorporate, for example, the hoots and quizzes into Prezi's. You can also incorporate Flipgrid, for example, links into Flipgrid. So you can have different ways to show, or for students to show their understanding of the knowledge that they are are acquiring as they're going through your Prezi presentation. And then you've also got in the third final step, design the learning experience and instruction. So what knowledge will your needers, uh, your learners need to reach the learning outcomes? Um, what materials and resources are required in your Prezi to accomplish this outcome? And what prior knowledge and experience learners already have? What kind of learning activities do you need? And what are the opportunities for student choice and student voice? Okay, so these are just, just even before I start creating my Prezi, these are the three questions I asked myself before I actually start applying content uh, into a Prezi. Okay, so um, because I'm also teaching asynchronous lessons, so asynchronous lessons are essentially lessons which are occurring at a different time. So I'm putting it on the LMS, for example, and the students have to work with it without me being actually present to present. So it means that my Prezi's have to have um, all the content available for our le my learners to access it. And this is very similar also to a, a flip learning model. So in the flip learning model, uh, the, the Prezi would have all the content you'd expect the learners to assess or access before you start uh, using that information on the Prezi in, in, in problems when you actually got them face to face or you're interacting with them synchronously uh, online. Okay, but before you even do that, you need to identify the content you want to include. Um, and these are just six examples of resources that you should develop uh, with your Prezi content, okay? So you might already have existing lesson plans, okay? So you're essentially just adapting your Prezi to those existing lesson plans. Uh, if you have a curated video library, you can also incorporate that. So I myself have uh, my own YouTube channel, um, but you can also use, um, for example, I'm a science teacher, so examples of, of YouTube, um, uh, what's, what's the word, YouTube um, for, uh, content is ASAP Science, Veracityum, uh, an Australian researcher and science teacher, and Crash Course, which I can all, you can also incorporate uh, into your Prezi. Um, readings can also be incorporated Okay, you can also incorporate Google Docs. So there's, again, there's lots of opportunities with Prezi to App Smash. Um, since you can actually update Google Docs without actually, actually uh, requiring a change of file. The advantage of Prezi is, again, the, the use of information through um, visual means. So Prezi Next and Prezi Video are very engaging because you can add infographics to your content uh, to provide even more engagement with your learners. Um, you can also uh, upload PowerPoints, okay? So if you have already content um, on, on PowerPoint or PDFs, 
um, you can upload those files to the Prezi website and it can then integrate that through artificial intelligence to create Prezi's from that. So it actually saves you time rather than trying to reinvent the world. Uh, and also uh, Prezi Next um, itself doesn't have assessment capabilities, but you can link assignments and discussions into the Prezi and also into Microsoft Teams and Google Classroom. Okay, so those are all things uh, that you can incorporate into your Prezi's uh, in order to uh, direct the learning. So in terms of making an outline before you even begin making your Prezi presentation is identify the order of content. Okay, so think about how you're creating a narrative and a trajectory for your Prezi. Because Prezi is very visual, as you can see by the jumping around of all the, the images, and the use of images quite, is quite uh, image heavy uh, with Prezi, you need to be able to think about how you're going to direct the lesson. Okay, and because of that, you need to place the, the content assets um, accordingly. So when I say content assets, I mean videos and images and text. Okay, so consider how you want to actually scaffold the experience uh, to hold the attention of, of your learners, okay, and, and ask questions of your learners. Um, pinpoint gaps in content. Okay, so in the asynchronous model, the content should stand on its own, okay, and you will find there's actually areas um, of where you haven't really given effective instruction for scaffolding um, in terms of those asynchronous learners. So with that in mind, you can think about that and what content you can add to, to actually pinpoint these gaps in learning. Okay, um, and locate spots where formative assessment and reflection make sense. So by having points in the lesson, uh, the Prezi presentation where you can incorporate formative assessment and reflection so you can actually see if the learners are actually grasping what you're trying to teach, okay? Um, and there's an example there. So uh, actually there's a point, all, all this presentation and presentation also had a more in-depth Prezi video is on the Wakelet, uh, which I'm sure that Anna has a link to. Um, yeah, so, that's, so you don't have to just take all notes for this. Okay, so the, the, the inquiry model I use is the community of inquiry model. Uh, and that's the idea of cross-referencing um, your original outline for your Prezi uh, with the uh, referencing of the resources uh, to find where you actually need uh, content, okay? Um, so there are three elements of effective remote learning, okay? You've got the uh, instructional presence, uh, the cognitive presence, and I can't remember the other one. Uh, can't remember, anyway. Um, and it's, so it's the ability of a participant to identify where the community uh, communicate purposely in a trusting relationship. So I, I guess that's the, the community presence. Okay, so it means students um, feel comfortable within the framework of your, your classroom to take risks. There's the instructional presence and it's the design and the direction of cognitive and social processes for the purposes of realizing personally meaningful and educationally worthwhile. Okay, that's just um, fancy words. But it's basically um, how you're going to instruct for the students, what kind of content. Um, and then the cognitive presence is how effectively the learners are able to construct and confirm meaning um, through, again, reflecting on the content that your Prezi has. Um, yeah, so in terms of Prezi in this, this new normal of COVID-19, um, you might have to add content to kind of um, fill in the gaps and make an emotional connection. Um, so that's why with Prezi video, for example, it's very important that you have your face there, you have your voice, so students have that, that connection. Oh, social presence, that was it. Okay. Okay, so in terms of, so I'll look at Prezi video first, and then we'll go to Prezi presentations, Prezi next. Um, so in terms of making um, the most out of your video, just a few tips for recording, okay? Um, so if we just go here. So your camera is important, okay? So the laptop I'm using at the moment, my MacBook has a built-in camera, uh, but I've also bought an external camera. Um, so it's important that you, um, you don't really necessarily need a high-powered, expensive camera. Mobile phone actually works quite good um, for a, a document scanner as well, okay? So make sure that you, of course, place your laptop or computer on an even, stable surface. Okay, this gives a steady image. 
uh, to uh, before you record and make sure it, your content fits the frame together. Otherwise, your content may cover your face. So this is one of the issues when you're converting, say, a Prezi Next into a Prezi video. Um, make sure there is actually room on the presentation for your face to be there. Okay, and in terms of recording devices, here are just some suggestions um, that I use. Okay, so I've just bought a, a Logitech C920S Pro. Okay, this, this basically creates a, a sharper image um, because that's the advantage of using an external webcam instead of using a computer's camera um, because I also like to demonstrate experiments, for example, uh, which I can then um, place onto my Prezi. Uh, in terms of lighting, uh, record the video where the light is the light source is actually in front of you. So at the moment, I've got my light going in front of me. Okay, um, yeah, because if it's behind you, it looks like you're a witness protection program in the states. Yeah, um, yeah, it looks like you're in prison or something. Okay, um, so don't record directly into the sun. Um, this can cause shadows. Make sure you're well lit. Um, so here are some suggestions I think for lights. Um, a budget ring light's quite useful. Um, and, and newer LED lights. So there's some links there as well just to help you with that. Uh, in terms of audio, um, eliminate, try to eliminate background noise. I guess at the moment in Malaysia when I'm teaching at home, I've got the, new, the Singaporean Air Force flying over, which is rather annoying. Um, but usually in the morning it's quite quiet. Um, so it's sure you record your video in a quiet place. And also you can consider the fan as well can cause some issues. Um, around that. Um, so what I actually do to solve the problem with audio is use headphones and an external microphone um, because it, obviously it can be challenging uh, in a busy home environment. Lots of things are going on and there's lots of external noise. Okay, in terms of the background, okay, so um, there's an example there from YouTube, uh, Jamie Ewing. Okay, so he has a very simple black background. Okay, you can even use a shower curtain, for example. Simple basic background. My background is, is a white background. Uh, except for today, we've got my Maldives picture behind me. Um, but make sure that your background is of anything embarrassing. So I remember that about two years ago, there was that BBC um, interview where the, the children came in, uh, the two and three year old, um, the mini chasing behind, um, which potentially was embarrassing for that particular uh, personal interview. Um, spice up any empty walls, so I've just bought a, a, a new plant and some books. Um, it just adds a bit of character and basically keep it simple, okay, in terms of backgrounds. Um, so here's some, so in terms of uh, creating new videos on um, Prezi, okay, uh, the advantage is that you basically, there's the, the, the four step plan, you create a new video, um, there's a whole range of different templates which are automatic. On, on Prezi, okay, this makes it fast and easy to develop a Prezi video. Um, and then we go to uh, number three, you add text and images to overlay to explain to the students um, what you're actually um, teaching today. Then we've got um, record, and we can toggle between views during recording and edit. And then finally, save, post, and download. And if you want to level up, if you, you think you can, can do that after you've had some experience, and making Prezi videos, uh, you can import from PowerPoint, advanced create, import from other Prezi's, and create custom templates. Okay, and I'll just show you this quick video of how you do it. Introducing Prezi Video, a whole new video creation tool that puts you right alongside your content so that you can interact with it on screen, keep your audience engaged, and have fun all at the same time. In the dashboard, click Create New Video. Nice, looking good. Here you can reuse someone else's or choose a template. Let's start with our own for now. Now click Next Step. Give your video a title. Add your first frame after the title. You can also add images by searching for one here. Or you can also upload your own image here. Once you have all your frames, you can rearrange the order by just dragging the tabs where you want them to be. Now let's record. Click Next Step. Before recording, you might want to practice a few times. 
Even I had to redo it a few times. Once you're ready, hit that record button. You can use the three buttons here to toggle between showing you, you with your content, or just your content. Awesome. Once you're done, click the red button again to stop recording. No worries, you can always trim the beginning and the end of the video if you want to, here. When you're done, give it a preview. If you want, you can record it again or delete it entirely and start from scratch. If you like your take, then you're almost ready to go. Just add your video a title, tags, and description. Then choose how you want to share your video. Post it on your favorite social media channel, stream live with video conference and webinar apps, share your video with a link, or download it and share as an attachment. Oh, don't forget to set your privacy. Your video can either be public or reusable for other creators to use too, or unlisted so only those with the link can enjoy your work. If you get stuck at any time, feel free to chat with us anytime. We're here to help. And when you're ready to create more videos, try importing your PPT slides or check out our advanced editor to create more customized videos that fit your brand and style. Oh, we almost forgot the most important tip. Have fun while doing it. Yep, I have fun, that's true. Okay, so that's uh, the, the basic overview of uh, using Prezi Video. Uh, in terms of advanced features, uh, there's the import from PowerPoint, which I've been using quite a lot, so I have a number of PowerPoints. Um, so if you already have a PowerPoint, you can actually create a Prezi video from a PowerPoint. So basically there's the, the five-step plan. Um, so you create um, basically a unlimited length video. Um, you import your PowerPoint presentation. You select your template like before. You add images and text like before. Save, publish, and download as before. Okay, so that's the kind of five-step plan. So another video here explaining how that works. Prezi Video puts you front and center right with your content. And with our advanced editor, you can wow your audience even more. To import your slides, you'll need the Prezi Video desktop app. From your online dashboard, click Import PowerPoint to open the app automatically, or click Download Prezi Video for desktop. Once the app's open, find your PowerPoint and click Open. It may take a few moments to convert your slides, but once it's ready, you can choose to import some or all of your slides. Here's a tip. Hold Shift and click on different slides to select more than one to import. You'll see your slides import over here on the side. Let's delete the first frame by clicking the X here. You can change the template look with your slides if you'd like. And if you want, you can add more content by clicking Content and then add your own text and images. Otherwise, it's time to share your video with the world. Or just your specific audience, that's fine too. But before you do, we recommend practicing a few times. If you're ready to broadcast, click Go Live to stream live with various video conference and webinar apps. Or go back and click Record to create a video that you can send out later. When you're ready, hit the red button to start recording. You can use the three buttons here to toggle between you, you and your content, or just your content. Awesome. Once you're done, click the red button again to stop. No worries. You can always trim the beginning and the end of the video if you want to, here. When you're done, give it a preview. If you like your take, then you're almost ready to go. Click Export to download a video that you can play offline. You can download it to be optimized for social media, mobile, or simply keep it at its current size. Give it a name and then click Save. Just make sure you know where you saved it. And that's it. Start taking those slide decks and turn them into engaging video content with Prezi Video. Yeah. Okay, so again, uh, for those who want to extend themselves, Advanced Create, which I'm just starting to play with now. Um, so it's basically how to use Advanced Create in terms of choosing and modifying a template, changing the style and uh, color scheme, record or present live, and then save, publish, and download. Again, so so basically not don't run before you can walk, so get comfortable with using Prezi Next and 
making Prezi videos, and then you can start building up um, your your uh, the quality of your flipped um, videos. And again, here is a short video explaining it. Prezi Video puts you front and center right with your content, and with our advanced editor, you can wow your audience even more. From the dashboard, click Advanced Create, and then Create Now. Choose from one of these fully customizable templates, and then click Use this template to open the editor. Don't forget to hit Allow Camera to see how you look with your content. Yeah, looking good. Let's start with the title by double-clicking the text box. Let's edit these triangles over here, which we call topics, by double-clicking and adding titles to each. You can use the insert menu to add images, icons, and even create your own charts. We only need three topics, so let's click and delete the fourth one. Now that we've got our content, it's time to customize. Click Style. From here, we can change the topic shapes, set our own colors to match our brand. Once you're ready, click Create Video. Choose to record your video now or live stream it instead. Let's record one that we can send out for now. Before recording, you might want to practice a few times. Once you're ready, hit that record button. You can use the three buttons here to toggle between you, you and your content, or just your content. Awesome. Once you're done, click the red button again to stop. No worries, you can always trim the beginning and the end of the video if you want to, here. When you're done, give it a preview. If you want, you can record it again or delete it entirely and start from scratch. If you like your tape, then you're almost ready to go. Just add your video a title, tags, and description. Then choose how you want to share your video. Post it on your favorite social media channel, stream live with video conference and webinar apps, share your video with a link, or download it and share as an attachment. Oh, don't forget to set your privacy. Your video can either be public and reusable for other creators to use too, or unlisted so only those with the link can enjoy your work. If you get stuck at any time, feel free to chat with us anytime. We're here to help. And when you're ready to create more videos, try importing your PPT slides or check out our advanced editor to create more customized videos that fit your brand and style. Oh, we almost forgot the most important tip. Have fun while doing it. Yep, have fun. Okay, so that's uh, also you can now import from Prezi. So if you've already made a, a, a Prezi Next, you can create a video from that associated Prezi. Uh, and again, there we go. So once you click Create Video, the right side rail appears. Oh, and then uh, click to allow the camera. Next, you're able to adjust the content to make it presentable to your video. Uh, and then finally click record and you're ready to make your Prezi video from a Prezi. Once it loads up. So you have an amazing Prezi Next presentation that you want to turn into a video. Here's how you can do that. In the editor, click create video in the upper right corner. Now allow your camera so you can see yourself. It's recommended to click adjust content. This will automatically shift your layout to the right, so it won't be right in front of you. Then, make some final tweaks on it and then try practicing your new video a few times. Once you feel ready, let's record. You can stream your content live by clicking here, but to do this, you'll need the Prezi Video app. For now, let's record our video. Click Record Video. Click the red dot, and in three, two, one, action. The camera's rolling. Once you're done, click the red dot again, and if you need to, use the scissors to trim the beginning or end. Next, click Save Video. Add your video's details, choose your privacy settings, and download or share your video on social media. And that's all there is. Now go ahead and turn your amazing presentations into amazing videos with the Prezi. Here we go. Okay, um, so that's importing basically from Prezi. You can create your own templates and frames um, using um, an import from Prezi feature. Okay, uh, it's quite important though that you, when you're making your Prezi, there is, is room for your face um, to allow the cam. 
Okay, so uh, first thing you have to do is you allow the camera. Um, so you create a refiner template, click create video. Uh, when you allow camera, your image will show. Um, and then you, you need to uh, record the video or you can go live. Um, go live, you, only, you have to have the desktop app for that. Yeah. In terms of images, uh, visuals are great. Uh, it's important that they have um, uh, the correct resolution. So don't uh, so use images with high resolution. And there's lots of free images out there. Here, there's three examples: freeimages.com, unsplash.com, and pixabay.com. So you don't breach copyright. So we can all be good digital citizens. Okay. So in terms of <coughs> recording language, be clear, concise, and direct. Um, don't worry about the ums and the ahs um, too much because the kids are used to that and they're more interested in the content, okay? Uh, in terms, if you want to make sure that you can clear, concise, and direct, um, I recommend making little notes on the side beforehand. Um, so you focus on the content that you need to be pithy. Uh, questions and prompts are quite useful. Um, so for example, in my videos, I add questions and then there's a, quick pause and then they have to think about it and then replay the video okay it keeps them engaged keeps them thinking it keeps them uh, going over the content in their minds and bringing it to the forefront uh, subtitles are useful um, so where I am in Malaysia we have a large number of Japanese Korean and Chinese students um, so after you're done making the Prezi video uh, simply download it and then upload to YouTube and you can easily add subtitles and captioning or free. Uh, that just makes it more accessible for EAL learners. Okay, um, so in terms of designing your Prezi's, okay, so this is more at the Prezi Next rather than the Prezi video. The Prezi um, website is actually quite effective in being able for you to basically use templates. Okay, so you can you choose your own templates or start from scratch. Um, I'd recommend if you're just beginning to use a template, um, use topic and subtopic to create a structure um, to your Prezi, uh, add your content that you wish, and then you can use the insert functionality on the Prezi to add texts, images, icons, a whole range of different things, and also video, and then click the style to change your background, topic, colors, etc. Okay, just going through those. So in terms of Prezi next launch points, so it's template, you can use a template, you can do it from scratch, can download a PowerPoint or sorry upload a PowerPoint and use that or you can use a gallery okay so to begin with um, those are your potential options to begin your journey in making your first Prezi as it says there's no best way to start it really depends on what kind of content uh, and how much time you have um, so usually for my students 10 minute video max um, so otherwise it just becomes overload overloading in terms of cognitive load so you have to be kind of aware of that. Um, in terms of working with topics and subtopics, okay, so the way Prezi works is that you start off with a topic and then you move into different subtopics. Okay, so it basically becomes like an, a, a mind map. So you begin with a topic and it zooms in into the individual subtopics. Um, there is a link there um, on the, this presentation, this Prezi, which you have access to on the Wakelet uh, if you need more assistance in terms of structuring your Prezi Next in relation to topics and subtopics. In terms of style, um, that's up to you. It's kind of a personal thing. Uh, that's that's how you wish to come to customize. I guess the Americans will call it your brand. Um, I just call it my style. Um, I'd suggest using simple backgrounds uh, because if you use complex ones, it'll distract from your actual content uh, and choose topic shapes that correspond with the tone and tenor of your presentation and your theme. So for example, if I'm talking about life underwater, then obviously I'm gonna be using images relating to water, maybe blue as a, as a, as a color, uh, for example, or different tones of blue to kind of assist um, in the style of your presentation. Uh, in terms of insert, there's a whole range of things you can insert. You've got my library um, where you can basically download, upload photos from your computer, icons, PDFs, which you can use in your presentation. You've got Storyblocks, which allow you to um, preset graphical elements and layouts. 
very similar to Sway in Microsoft. Text, again, that's just adding text to your Prezi. Images and icons allow, there's a whole range of um, icons available in the Prezi library, which you can upload, or you can upload your own files in terms of images and icons. Animations, so you can play around with fade and zoom, just like PowerPoint. Uh, audio, you can use voiceover for your content, and of course, video, um, which also includes the idea of incorporating YouTube videos, for example, in your Prezi's. So just to finish off, engaging your students and start. So now you have your um, your Prezi, okay? So you can then add it to your LMS or course authoring tool, okay? So you can get a shareable link uh, to give you uh, give the students access to that link. And it also gives you uh, metrics on those who view it if you wish that option. Uh, you can also embed it into your LMS. Uh, there are, are a ra large range of options in terms of how you can then present your Prezi to your learning community. Uh, and just to finish off, um, thank you. Um, and I'd like to thank the Prezi Education team for helping with this as well. And of course, myself. Uh, good luck to creating your, your first Prezi's, getting involved. Um, and if there's any questions, I'm more than willing to uh, try and answer them. Wow, thank you so much. It was fantastic and really informative. I just was shocked um, how many options we've got uh, when we start using Prezi. Prezi? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Prezi, whatever. Yeah, I just want to uh, show up some comments. And uh, the first one is from Bushra. Yeah, hi there. I'm so glad to see you there. Yeah, she's writing with so many options of recording, designing, and subtitles in different languages. I'm sure it will uh, rev revolutionize online presentations. Thanks to you, my quote was absolutely tremendous. Your presentation, uh, wow, well, it's you're rocking. <laughs> so you rock. That's right. So and um, I saw a really cool question um, about the limit of the recording. I'm sorry. I just oh uh, yeah, I found it. So is there any limit uh, time limit for recording? Uh, you've mentioned that it's limitless. Yeah. Or? yeah well, you could live stream. And I guess it also depends because again, a freemium um, kind of application. So there's obviously a shorter limits uh, in terms of video. Um, for the premium, but as you go into the um, more um, options, um, then it becomes limitless because you've got the, the online streaming ability as well. Awesome, fantastic. And so a few questions from me, from my side. Um, how do you manage to order uh, of the slides? So we've got some options, like uh, to create a presentation and to use Prezi for creating videos, right? Yes, that's correct. Right. Um, so the way I break it down is I basically, well, it's the, the, t the topic, subtopic thing. So you basically got your, your basically three key points. Well, this is how I do it. My three key points I want as my topics. And then I break down those those topics into the subtopics over the space of, say, a, a five or ten minute video. Um, so you have to be very clear in what the structure you, you want right at the start. Otherwise, you just get lost. Yeah. So this is the trickiest thing for me <laughs> yeah. about the order of the slides. Wow, so many thank you words coming to you, Michael. Thanks a lot uh, from Alifia, from Valeri. Yeah, they're sharing with their thank you. Thank you for your job, your rock exactly. Thank you for being with us for the second time. We hope to uh, have you more in the future with great uh, interactive platforms like this ones. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And of course, Michael has prepared for you a great uh, collection on Wakelet with cool resources that you can use and which may help you to start using Prezi like uh, whenever you want to since uh, today's session, I guess. So here we go. I'm sending you the link. Thank you so much, Michael, again, for your great job. If you have any questions, please uh, just use the comment area and ask your questions. Uh, yeah, about the li time limit, it was a great question. Thank you for asking. Uh, so thank you both. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, stay safe, please. Yeah, it's getting worse and worse situation with COVID, but we can make it through. So, and uh, let's share, let's continue sharing. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great evening. Um, and uh, yeah, get ready for Monday. <laughs> but uh, most of the teachers, they are having holidays. 
Okay, so yes, yeah, some more comments are coming to you, Michael. Any last words for our great participants and peers? Yeah, I think just have some fun with it. Um, just go in there <laughs> and the mindset of just having a, a play and see what you can create. And also, I guess, allowing your students to have um, a play around with it to see what they can create as well. Oh, uh, okay. There is another question. I guess this is the last one. Uh, can two people uh, simultaneously from different locations? It's you mean the real time uh, thing? You have to work in real time um, together. Yes, you can do real time collaboration. Yes, that's again the freemium option. Oh, this is so awesome. Yeah. Ah, premium options, not that's not for free. Yeah. Okay. So the yeah. This is a really important thing to know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I think this is it. Mm, thanks again. Stay oh, safe. Well. Stay tuned. And bye to everyone. Thanks for joining us. See you. Cheers.